Okay, we are about ready. Let's do that. I gotta finish getting things set up, like on my phone. Volume's off. Swap it over. All right. <coughs> I think I'll probably just be trying Zemnis again. Because I managed to make it to phase two. And I kind of want to get back in that groove. Yeah, I kind of want to try to get back into the groove of finding, fighting Zemnus. So let's give it a go. At least we have a better, more consistent way of getting through phase one. So that's not... That makes this a little bit more doable. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure how to handle phase two yet. It's kind of what I'm gonna try to learn. dance again. Again, you could probably reflect it. You just need to stop gliding a little sooner just to be able to reflect. I just haven't learned the timing for that. Nor is it really needed. There we go. Uh, okay. Oh, whoops. Gotta get the death counter going. There we go. All right, let's give it another go. If I kept gliding, I would have been able to save myself. But because I technically stopped gliding, and then I had to restart the glide, he was able to catch up to me. Just missed the timing. Okay. 
what's next. Doing this again. Let's go. Okay, it's the normal dance. Okay. I didn't get reflect off in time. And I can't reflect this. What the? Okay, fine, whatever. This is going well, I guess. He's probably done with the normal dance anyway. Yep. So he loses like, what, seven bars of health? And then he'll uh, do that dance. Okay. Try it again. Far away. Back off. There we go. I obviously need to hold off on the glide itself until I see what he's actually going to do. I could jump in the air preemptively, preemptively like that. There we go. Exactly like that. So we're past the seven bars. So now he's doing this. Okay. So it seems once he loses seven bars of health, that's when he does the faster dance. Okay. I should say that's when he can do it. Okay. Alright, well. I'm just getting the timing wrong there. You gotta get two more bars out. done. Okay, let's see if we can hold this off.
I'm paying attention to the reaction command right above my attack command, not the triangle prompt over Zenness. I feel like it's a little bit easier. Only took three attempts to get our first attempt at phase two. Well, let's see if we can pull it off. Anger and hate are supreme. I'm just gonna dodge. What? Do I have to guard that last one? I was mashing triangle. I was mashing triangle and he still hit me. Do I have to guard that last hit? Or, again, sometimes it's like... I, I don't know if it's just... I... Because I already know that sometimes my magnet doesn't go off in time, and other times it does. So is this a case where it just didn't go, it didn't activate correctly, even though I was mashing it? Or is it one of those cases where I have to block with reflect on that final hit? I'm not sure. still do the normal dance. Okay, now it's fast dance. And again, it's a chance that he will do it. One more combo will do it. Alright. Okay, we made it. Phase two again. Again, I could limit if I want to play it safe. It's not 
Like, it's only dealing one full health bar of damage. Anger but I am safe. When pulling it off, so I don't know. Doing this again. Perfect. Come on, he went for Vine? Well, I got, I got farther than I did before. Is Vine a, a move that is distance-based? Like, he has to be a certain distance away for him to want to use that. I thought I got the timing right. Oh, great. Well, I can't reflect. I can't. Oh, I didn't time it right. Come on, Zemnis. I can... I could totally beat your face too. It's just a matter of time. Too far away. At least if I stop myself from gliding on this one, I can be able to catch myself and re-glide and still be safe. It's the faster one where I can't really do that. Speaking of the faster one. did catch myself, but okay, good. I briefly let go of the glide, but I managed to reset the glide while I still kept my speed, pretty much. Got two health bars to go. Uh, I didn't capitalize. Oh, okay. It does. I guess. We made the threshold, even though it wasn't at four health bar. Okay. It's not exactly four. It could be a little above, but yeah.
Phase two. Try it again. And hate are supreme. Perfect. Maybe I need to. I was mashing mag uh, reflect, but it didn't go off. Um, you know what? Let's get rid of slap shots. Wait, is is slap shot the one I want to get rid of? Attack that deals damage. Actually, I think it's dodge slash. I want to get rid of the attack that has Sora basically attacking to the left and right of him. Because there's only one target. And I don't think he needs it. Unless it counts as like three hits. Yeah, I think we managed to get rid of it. Granted, I have it's usually an opener, so I had I don't think I've seen if it if I actually took it off. Because most of the time I do this lunch. And I rather have that. We, we probably won't really know until phase two. That's when he's right next to me. Oh, come on. Okay. He can guard into a dance? Okay, whatever. I mean, I probably knew that, but... Yeah. Okay. Try again. Sora really only does that one move when enemies are close to him. I might be able to get my reflect back. No. Okay, we have reflect. I wonder if I should get rid of the air one, too. Because depending on how close I am, I only get one hit in. Leaping attack. On distant targets? I don't know if... We'll see if I... Got the right one out. Yeah, 
bad. I got the one I wanted to keep. His basic one, honestly. Okay, then. That was not part of the plan. I should heal. But ideally, I should also keep the reflect ready for, for now. Not until he loses seven bars of health. Oh, okay. I don't reflect while he does the faster variant. I think I almost missed the timing. Anger and hate All right. are supreme. Phase two. Yes, I'd rather have that. Thanks, Riku, for the heal. I somehow survived that. I can't reflect now. So maybe I should just glide around until I can? Oh my god, that vine will just catch you. That vine will just catch you. Okay. It homes in. Good to know. I didn't really realize that. I guess what I should have done is if I'm low on health and Riku's not going to heal me or I need to heal myself, I should limit, maybe? And then after the limit, immediately go into an elixir. 
Because maybe that's the safest way to get an elixir. Faster dance. Ooh, I caught that. Nope, too far away. Maybe I should just double jump and not glide. Unless I see him doing the dance. Because double jump might be enough. So basically when the screen gets dark, that's when I know to glide. And I still have my forward momentum to keep my speed. So, if I need to elixir, then I should limit, and then immediately after the limit, try to elixir. The question is, will I have enough time to get the elixir off, but that's what we're trying. It really just depend on depends on what he does. Okay. I need to heal. Grabs me, I need to. Okay. Okay. What did he do? I mean, it was a vine, but. It's not the same one. At that point, do I just need to reflect no matter what? It seems like I got into like a, a second phase that I'm not sure of.
But as you kind, as I kind of saw, after I used my uh, limit, I had plenty of time to get the elixir off. It's like I had invincibility still. And then go immediately into dodging his vines. So I can elixir out of the limit. Past the seven bars. There we go. Okay. I didn't double jump. Try that again. again. Oh, for some reason, Reflect wasn't activating. I'm not sure if I just didn't press it or what. I don't know what happened there. Okay, no Reflect for me. Like, I thought for sure I was pressing, pressing uh, Reflect, but it just didn't go off. You know, one thing I could try doing... Uh, if he grabs me, what if I just... Oh, oops. Sorry, I got lost in thought. If he grabs me, what if instead of reflect, I try to go straight into a limit? Would that e One, would that even be possible? Or are we still talking the same odds of it activating before he hits me? mess that up. Okay. We're 
not at we're not at the fast dance. Oh, we are at the fast dance. I guess we're at that threshold. Okay. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I'm gonna... But that matters. Let's see. Dance again. Uh, we might be ready. Okay. I wasn't 100% sure. Okay. Anger and hate are supreme. So I can limit. Okay, one trade off. I'm not on the ground. Oh no, I am on the ground. ever seen that honestly that's a first i don't remember that reaction command ever that might be a first for me i don't think i've ever seen that before so i didn't know what to do mass triangle i should have just expected that but i didn't know what was happening but yeah good to know if he grabs me i can still limit And that might be safer than using or trying to get reflect. I could get more out of mashing reflect in terms of damage, but I can't consistently get that first block. And if getting a limit is more consistent, and since that final hit will also just automatically put me on the ground, I can immediately get an elixir. So it still serves the same purpose.
Okay, doing the dance. Yeah, at this point I need to be more careful about my glides. Okay, I did not do this right. Pretty sure he can guard, so that's why I don't directly f glide above him. Okay, I was expecting a dance. I have a feel, if I remember correctly, if you try to go for one of the other two, you probably just don't deal nearly as much damage. I remember when I first played this, I would just mash triangle, so I didn't even know there was a second or a third variant. Okay, good. I can save myself this way. I may not be dealing nearly as much damage, but I'm completely safe. Okay, we're doing this. I'm mashing triangle. He's not stunned immediately after a physical attack. 1450. Hmm. Should I just immediately try to block? I don't know. Giving Riku an elixir won't help me. I don't think it would. I would have to be spamming the, ch the limit. And even then, you still have to rely on Riku's AI. But if I did give him elixirs, how many health bars could I get rid of? Because each each limit give gets rid of about a full health bar from him. And I know when we're in the final stretch of his health, he does that laser move. And if you get through that, then you win.
even if, and I think he has, he does that when he's on his last, I think he's on his last health bar or two. Kind of like when we do the skyscraper thing. Again. I think when we get to phase two, I'll check to see how many items Riku can hold. And I'll see if giving him elixirs would be a good idea. The problem is, what I would probably have to do is just immediately spam limit. That way he is likely to want to use an elixir on me because I will not have MP to spare at that point. If he uses a cure, he wastes all of his MP. And if he does that... If he does that, he's using an elixir on himself. Where's the health? Does he have one, two, three? So Zemnis Form One has 16 bars of health, or 17, because I was just counting the the extra bars. But yeah, I currently have eight elixirs, which if I were to spam the full thing, that's half his health. Of phase two, assuming it all works and he doesn't dodge some of those hits. I have no idea how many elixirs Riku can hold, but I have a feeling it's not enough. And I don't think my strategy should just be spam limits. Clearly, spamming limits doesn't work for data fights. It worked out when, during main fights, main story when they don't have that much health or, st or defensive stats. Look at Zaldin. Spamming Duck Flare worked out. Zaldin data fight, though. Spamming Duck Flare doesn't really work out. Yeah. Take this. 
You know what I'm kind of thinking of doing? Maybe not today, but... Maybe do the synthesis grinding stuff to fill out Jiminy, Jiminy's journal. Just to kind of give something else to do. Ah, oh, come on! I... Mm. Not at the faster dance yet. Getting close. One more bar of hell. Alright, fast dance is available. Oh, come on! I think I lost my groove. Gotta keep going, though. be done, I'm just, like, being stupid. Okay. Five bars. part of the plan, but that's just how it happened. Okay, fast dance. Hey, Monzai, how's it going? Uh, just trying to beat Zen- trying to work on Zenness today, more or less, because I could get to phase two more consistently than I was before. And now it's mostly just trying to work on fa learn phase two. Yeah, still. I got Zemnis, Zaldin, Zigbar, Axel, Vexen, and Larkseen. I made no progress yesterday, to be honest, and I still have Hades Cup. The only progress I made was being able to more consistently get to phase two of Zemnis. I say more consistently. Because I can still lose. Because of stupidity. Uh, I think we need one more combo. Okay. Good. 
go here. What I have decided to do, Monzai, uh, I thought about this yesterday, made stream. Uh, the next game I wanted to start streaming, I wanted to make sure to get it started while it's still October. But it kind of looks like I'm probably going to be stuck during doing Kingdom Hearts for a while because these bosses are difficult. So my plan is that if by the end of the week I'm still not done with Kingdom Hearts 2, and that's most likely going to be the case, uh, then next week I'll move on to the next game, but make Kingdom Hearts 2 like a Wednesday stream so I still work on the level 1 run. Okay, I want to check. Riku. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can hold six elixirs. That's 14 bars of health if I give Riku elixirs. Oh my god. Okay. If Xemnas has about a spooky game, it's it it's it's spooky. it's spooky. It fits the October vibe. Uh, I may grind for elixirs just to give Riku six elixirs. So that way I could just spam limits. Because maybe I could just spam limit. Anger and hate are supreme. Come on. And I took some damage. Okay. Get the elixir going. I'll reveal it on Friday. Where is he? Okay. So... I'm actually thinking of giving Riku elixirs. Let's do that. If, if I spam limits immediately, I could probably get through about 14 bars of his health. That should get me to, if not very close, to uh, that should get me very close to his desperation move. And that's all we need to go to anyway. So I want to get about six of these. And because I don't want him to use elixirs on himself, I could get rid of his cure... So that way he doesn't use it on himself. Because I can more or less guarantee to win if I uh, do the first phase like how I did. Okay, I can I can keep this. I'm gonna keep this. Oh yeah, what's going on, on your end, Monzai? Yeah. 
must be it. I got the one that was here, right? No, I didn't. Wasn't sure. Well, we got two. Well, I could get lucky lucky. Just playing DS version of Battle Network 5 for practice for your eventual BN5 playthrough. I see. I see. Uh, you know, I have never played the DS version of 5. Yeah, getting two lucky luckies would be good enough. Like, I always kind of wanted it. But it's like, I don't know. When you, when I had, I already had the two GBA carts. So even I was just like, I don't know if I really need the DS version, even though that is a way better deal. You know, two games for, for one cart and there's like, what, a couple extra things involved? Being able to swap the Liberation Party members when you want. That's a cool detail. They add a lot of new features? Okay. Okay, I have three now. Again, at some point I'll probably pick it up, but because I already had the, the two GBA carts, I didn't feel the need to get it. And it's kind of weird that they only did that with Battle Network 5. They did not do that with 6. Like, I, I find that strange. Party Battle System lets you use Liberation Team members at any time. And an entire new... F oh, Soul Cross, right. Soul Cross wasn't in the... Uh, download cards on Legacy Correction, correct? That was just base form, I think. I don't think Soul was a part of it. Yeah, I remember base form being a part of it. And you had to use the base form just to access, like, two of the base fights. If not all three. It was weird. It kind of makes more sense on the cer on the dead ends that are in Battle Network 5 when you have base cross. Because those dead ends just don't make any sense without that context. The lock-on features also give you new bonus items for the shops. Yeah, the base fights are in the GBA version, but you don't have access to base cross Mega Man. So those fights were impossible to get, I believe, in the US version. Yeah, in, yeah just in the US. How many elixirs do I have? Two more. Does Soul Cross uh, adds any extra content, or is it just a new fighting style? Like you're not gonna get a new fight with Django, are you? If you use Soul Cross. Kidding me. I gotta work on getting rid of one of them before I get hit by the other. Yeah. 
Oh, Lucid Crystal, that's the Neo Shadow, okay. Another Lucid Crystal, okay. Nope, no elixir. Okay, I got rid of that one. Let me do a double check. I got both of these. Yep. Okay, gonna have to leave the world, come back. Uh, it's a gun soul charge shot. I forget to go quite yet, since it's still two mega ch minus two mega chips, right. Well, honestly, I kind of wish Gun Soul, uh, or Gun Cross, Soul Cross, whatever it is, uh, was in Battle Network 4. That would probably help against Shade Man. Making a good use of a few Mega Chips. Yeah, I know. Like, there, there's some good ones. Basically, like, any multi hit Mega Chip is the best Mega Chip. So new stuff gets added to the shops when you put in either the GBA Battle Network 5s? Like what? What gets added in? Is there one more? Yes. Okay, I, I still need one more. Put in Battle Network 1, an NPC appears in the underneath and gives you a new extra folder. Oh, okay. So it's any of the Battle Network games beforehand. Put in Battle Network 2, MC appears in Dad's lab and sells sub chips for half price. That's useful. Battle Network 3, NPC appears in end area and sells exclusive NaviCust programs. And those NaviCust programs were never in the original GBA cart uh, carts. It's only in. Uh, a DS version. It doesn't matter if it's either of the Battle Network 3 games, or is it, like, is there something for one, having one versus the other? Either Battle Network 3. Hmm. An extra speed plus one, extra charge plus one, and one other thing. Hmm. It's kind of weird. You know, I remember the patch cards in, like, uh, the later Battle Network games when I was playing Legacy Collection. Give it, and the only way to get certain... Navicus programs was through the patch cards. Yeah. 
is this a case where you can get those in GBA, but you needed the patch cards, but in DS, you just need to plug in the right uh, GBA game instead of using patch cards? We're in Battle Network 4. On the BBS, the post will just tell you the program advances, like all of them? These were DS exclusive, really? Hmm. Okay. So it tells you all the program advances? You know what would be cool, though, is if, depending on which game you put put in, this would be a lot of extra work, but if they added in a new boss fight, depending on which game you put in, it's not. it wouldn't be required. It would probably be considered secret chips. But imagine if you put in Battle Network 1 and the game, Battle Network 5, gives you the option to fight... Uh, probably wouldn't be a final boss, so it would probably be like someone like Stone Man or Shark Man or something. Just to have a new fight. And then you put in Battle Network 2, I don't know, maybe you fight Gate Man. You know? And if you want, with Battle Network 3, you can go the route of either Battle Network 3 would work and give you the same fight, or if you put in Blue, you fight Bull Man. And put in White, you fight Mist Man or something. That would have been a cool thing to do. If you put in uh, 4.5, uh, a program will appear in Lance PC and you'll get an email for a scavenger hunt with the final pot as being 50,000 zenny. Ooh. I didn't know 4.5 would be involved. What about Battle Chip Challenge? If 4.5 is being used here, you think Battle Chip Challenge would be. the one. I better keep it. Alright, I'm gonna go make sure I keep this elixir, but I'm gonna fight the rest, see if I get any extras. If you put in Bound Network 5, the opposite version of whatever you're playing, someone will email you a, a TP chip, and you can buy the opposite version's base Navi chips and Higsby's. Oh, okay. You can also use your GBA games folder as an extra folder. Oh, really? So, what I could do is boot up my, like, Battle Network 5 folder and put, like, an end game folder or something. And basically play through the entire game from the start with that end game folder if I wanted to? Okay. Meaning you can use the opposite version's Giga Chips. Oh, that's another way to use it. Okay, I'm just gonna... Oh, that'd be kind of interesting way to play through Battle Network 5. You're like, eh, I already played this, like, two other times. Let's, you know, cheese through this. End game folders, you know. Uh, I just need to stop in here. What we'll do is we go here and we'll throw in elixirs. This way, it's all preset. Oops. 
flew too fast. I wasn't paying attention. And you get, and if you 100 percent it, you get base cross. Is that just 100 percenting the DS version? You just get access to base cross, and you don't need to use lock on technology. But there's actually a glitch where if you have no save file on the cart, it also gives you base cross and the TP chips. Okay, when you say 100%, do you mean 100% the GBA cart when you do the lock-on? Or 100% the, just the DS version? I'm a little confused. 100, okay, so if you 100% the GBA cart, and you plug it into DS, not only do you get the... The benefits of the other folder, the uh, being able to buy the opposite version's chips, and uh, uh, sorry, you get those benefits, and if you 100%, you also get access to base cross, meaning you have an official U.S. way to fight the to do the base fights. You know, before Legacy Collection. And part of me wonders why 6 didn't get a DS version, but to be honest, uh, that era of Mega Man was oversaturated, so maybe they just kind of thought that... Releasing another version wouldn't just would just not do well. Maybe the sales of DS did not do well. Fuck like two, you could get Soul Cross, and that hundred uh, battle samurai get becomes a thousand samurai thing. Okay. Do you get anything for doing the Thousand Samurai Gauntlet? That'd be cool, even if it's just bragging rights. Well, not bragging like rights, but gives you like some sort of like trophy, basically. Be like, hey, you did it. Now go outside. I mean, it makes sense that there would be something involving Boktai 2. But is there something involving Boktai 1 if you plug that in? get cross up your points for doing that, I see. If you do Boktai 1, you also get... You get less points, but you do get the Samurai Battle. Oh, okay. But no Soul Cross. So, really, it's just if you want the Samurai Battle. And that's it. I want number. Okay. Okay. Riku should have elixirs. He does. Anger and hate are supreme. Good. 
Riku hasn't used an elixir yet. We're just going with Session. I don't know if he used an elixir. He used an elixir. That's the risk I take. I am hoping Riku will use one of his elixirs on me. Okay, no time for an elixir. Alright, he could just go straight into an attack. Boktai 3, number of bats is 10? Wait, okay, Boktai 2. Thirty points given, Boktai 2, number twenty. Japan only is Boktai 3 in the Japanese version. This is what you need for Soul Cross. So in the Japanese version of DS, you needed to use Boktai 3. But American version gives you access to Bokta lets you get in Boktai 2. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Riku wasted an elixir because I died. But he didn't use it. If I gave him, well, if I gave him ethers, then the same thing. But maybe he's not likely to use a elixir unless I'm low on health. that timing. Okay, he may do the dance. of health left. I think we need one more combo. Oh. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, if you want crossover points, you're better off plugging in Boktai 1. But if you want Soul Cross, you want to plug in Boktai 2 in America, Boktai 3 in Japan. So it comes off as it, there's a trade off between do you want crossover points or do you want access to 
uh, Soul Cross. Riku should still have items. He does. Good. Anger and hate are supreme. All right. I want to see if Riku will actually give me an elixir. Yes, he will. Is that all you got? So that's two elixirs. I wasted this. I still need to be close to him. I think he has at least one more elixir. I feel like I'm just wasting my MP by doing this. Riku had another one. I don't know if this is going to work, but that's what we're trying. Why aren't you targeting him? two more. I don't think I'm going to be pulling it off. Well, 
Well, that's the farthest I've gotten. <laughs> uh, so if you get, if you got 30 bats, Boktai divides. Oh, you need 30 uh, hits on the samurai to get a single point. Boktai 3. You get three points for every 30 hits. Okay. I get it. He's incented to use all games. Yeah, I think that's probably how they should have handled it. Instead of just having the most recent game. Try out Soul Cross. It has one more feature. In the sun, it also boosts all chips by 20 damage. It takes like a second to charge. Hmm. So, I'm assuming when you say in the sun, it's one of those cases where you have to uh, stand in an open area. And since this is Battle Network 5, so we're, we're talking like Auron area. For it to work. You know, the funny thing is, I thought Riku used up all of his elixirs, but he had two more. I should have held off on the heal. Oh well. Yeah, I still have eight. So Riku should still have a six. That strategy almost worked out if I caught if Riku had more elixirs or not. Maybe I wouldn't have to waste some of mine, but I got caught in a combo. I don't think there, there was any way out of that specifically. Like, it's a strategy that can work. It would be better if I attacked him a little bit. Maybe start the limits when he grabs me the first time. And hope that Riku doesn't waste any elixirs along the way. Gargoyle dungeon or uh, end area. Yeah, those areas specifically is kind of what I was trying to get at. Okay, that was me being stupid. Did... Uh, 5DS sell well at all? Like, or, like, how did it sell compared to the GBA versions? And I guess comparing the other games that were at, the other Mega Man games that came out that year on DS. We're probably talking, uh,. We'd probably be talking like ZX was probably on DS by then. I don't think Star Force was made until after 6. At this point, there was oversaturate. I mean, yes, there was an oversaturation.
for sure. But like, I, I, I'm kind of wondering how it's sold in comparison to the GBA cards specifically. But yeah, Mega Man was oversaturated during like the 2000s. Up until like the early 20, well, up until like 2010, maybe a little bit before 2010, Mega Man was just oversaturated. Oh, okay. Okay. Just think about, I, I know I bring this up all the time, but like, okay, so classic Mega Man didn't really have anything. Uh, it had a few things though, like, like in the early 2000s, classic Mega Man had the GBA Mega Man and base. And it had the Anniversary Collection on GameCube, PS2, Xbox. And then eventually, in like 2008, it got Mega Man 9. Then Mega Man 10 was 2010, I believe. But that's all classic Mega Man. X was getting games in the 2000s. Uh, I don't remember when X6 happened, but X7 and X8 were in the 2000s, as well as X Command Mission. And then, starting in the early 2000s was the Zero series, which that had 1 through 4, and then once that was done, Zero, uh, ZX and ZX Advent on DS. And then you also had Battle Network during that time, starting in 2001. And freaking Battle Network got a new game every year. A new main game everywhere, not not including spin-offs like Network Transmission or Battle Chip Challenge. But then once that ended, Star Force started. At least in that case, they waited for Battle Network to end, I think. Uh Legends, I think, was already done by this point. Yep. I think Legends 2 came out in 2000. Yeah, Mega Man was definitely oversaturated in those in that time. Also, X had collections, too. The X anniversary, anniversary uh, collection. Had one through six on it. As well as... Uh, what did it have? It was like... I think it was Battle and Chase was on the X collection. And I think that might have been the only way for the US to play Battle and Chase. I think the classic Mega Man Anniversary Collection had the two arcade fighting games, Power Fighters and Power Battle. I have both games. I have both Anniversary Collections on PS2. I barely tried Battle and Chase. I feel like I need to actually give that an go. Oh, we're still on this one. Okay, now we're on the faster variants. But then, you know, early 2010s, uh, they canceled a bunch of stuff because Inafune left. And we haven't really gotten Mega Man since, other than Legacy Collections and Mega Man 11. Yeah, 
Which, again, I'm kind of shocked that we haven't gotten an actual new Mega Man game since 11. Because if I remember correctly, 11 is the best-selling Mega Man game as of now. Unless we count collections, but I don't know if we count that in this case. Like, it finally overtopped Mega Man 2. Now, I get Mega Man 11 was a game made out of spite. Because, you know, Infune was making Mighty Number no. 9. But even so, it was their best selling Mega Man game. You think after seeing that, I'd be like, oh, let's make some more. But no. And you know, and you know they may do more Mega Man now because uh, if you remember that Capcom poll that was done earlier this year or end of last year, good. Uh, the results came in like a few months ago, I think. I was talking to my friend about this. If I remember correctly, uh, uh so Mega Man is the fourth best-selling Capcom franchise, I believe. Because Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and Street Fighter sell better than Mega Man. But, when people, when the, it was asked, uh, what is their most popular, uh, what's the word? Like, character line? Like, characters, maybe? I, I think? Like, Mega Man was number one or two. I don't remember exactly what it was, what the wording was. But people like Mega Man. And not only that, Anger and uh, are supreme. not only is Mega Man 11 the best-selling Mega Man right now, uh, Legacy Collection Battle Network. I was mashing triangle. Legacy Collection for Battle Network is also one of their best-selling Mega Man things. So, it's like they know people like people want Mega Man. There are many things showing that people want more Mega Man. So it's entirely possible that now that that poll is done and released, they might start actually doing Mega Man projects. Like actual new Mega Man projects, since they actually know people want Mega Man. It's just they gotta avoid oversaturation, and let's be honest, they're that's probably not going to happen. We are probably not going to get the 2000s Mega Man era where there's like five different continuities of Mega Man going on at once and they're each getting like three games. Oh, and one other thing about the 2000s Mega Man era. Uh, I mentioned all the games. Mega Man was getting a lot of, like, cameos and, like, crossovers and stuff. Uh, let me see. It was, uh, there's, I think there's an SNK versus Capcom game on PS2. And Zero is a cameo character. There's a, uh... I think it's like a uh, there's like an Omni Musha fighting game or something. I forget if that's what it actually was, but Mega Man .exe and Zero are playable in those in that game. In that fighting game, don't know why the combo didn't continue. I mean, that's what cop, uh, pops up immediately in my head. And of course, whenever there was like a Marvel versus Capcom, you got Mega Man, you got Zero, you got Tron Bond, you know, Tatsunoko versus Capcom, 
pad roll, as well as Mega Man Volnut. So like Mega Man was everywhere during that uh, during that time, and I guess I guess we have to count the crossover stuff for Boktai. I guess we have to count that because that was Konami. Oh, come on. I was almost there. I almost had it. We almost made it to phase two. I, was, I just got too close. But yeah, now we're at a point where we get, like, no Mega Man. We are lucky to get a collection. And I'll, I'll also point this out, that if it wasn't for COVID, we would have gotten Battle Network collection sooner. They kind of made it uh, clear that... There was going to be something Battle Network related, quote unquote, uh, that was going to be released, but then COVID had to delay things. So, yeah, for sure, Battle Network Collection was supposed to be released during COVID, during, uh, it was like Battle Network's anniversary. It's kind of obvious that was going to happen. They did release a new bounty thing. Right. But I think they said they wanted to do more, but COVID, like, kind of put a stop to it. And at the time, I'm like, oh, it's Battle Network Collection. Yeah, the LAN and uh, Battle Network costumes are in Dead Rising. So that's probably a... Uh, a result of how well Battle Network Collection sold. And I'm pretty sure the Mega Buster is still normally in the Dead Rising remake, isn't it? Oh. Like, that was always in the original to get the actual Mega Buster. And it's like the best weapon. Mega Man is a dead in 2017. They did a crossover with a theme park, really. I mean, game-wise, Mega Man was basically dead. Wait, in t 2017, was that when Mega Man 11 came out? Did Mega Man come... Oh, I need to look that up. When, what year did 11 come out? Yeah, it's not a completely dead franchise. Uh, I bet there's other Capcom games that are dead, like Demon's... Oh, what was it? The Demon's Crest. That's the one. Basically, the Ghosts and Goblins spinoff. Demon's Crest, I believe, is a dead franchise. Or a dead spinoff, however you want to call it. Because Ghosts and Goblins got that remake. Oh yeah, there's probably all their Capcom games that are considered dead, and Mega Man's not technically dead. Because they do bring Mega Man back. Here and there. It's just, Mega Man hasn't really gotten in a game. And, like, there's never any word of there being a game. But, you know, we could get ten Resident Evils, you know? I get that Resident Evils, I think they're best-selling. Actually, that may be Street Fighter, but still... I get it, priorities, but but there's like never a word about Mega Man, except for collections.
It's like they occasionally throw us Mega Man fans a bone. Be like, see, it's not dead here. Here's a costume in this other game. Like, okay. I mean, that's that's cool. You have them in mind. Can we get X9? Mega Man 12? Z uh, ZX3? No? Okay. What was this? But yeah, I think after, like, that questionnaire got released, they now know for sure how people like act actually like Mega Man. So they may actually do something. Is that copium? Maybe. I don't know. But you want to know what was a dead franchise? Rival Schools. And you know what's getting a, a, uh, not a remake, but a, uh, a port? Project Justice. In that new fighting game collection that's going to be coming out. So it's like some of their games are coming back. Even if it's just like a port. Hey, that's something, you know? Uh, nope. I knew I wasn't going to make it. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. We may rely on limits, but I'm not sure how well this will go. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay, good. Oh, dang. I should have been mashing triangle. I was expecting him to do the grab move, but no. He went for vine. Dang it. Back off. 
kind of want to look up that Capcom like poll and see the results so I can remember what some of the things were mentioned for Mega Man. This is what it was. Yeah. Like, I want to take a glance. Hey, hold on, hold on. Devil May Cry and... Do okay, so... Number one game, Devil May Cry 5. Number one character, Dante. Okay, that was which games do you like the best? Wait, real? Okay, wait a minute. Capcom games do you like the best? Number one was Devil May Cry 5. Number two was Dino Crisis. I don't think I actually took a look at this. I know I'm late to the game on this, but I didn't realize Dino Crisis was number two. Okami's number five. Oh, Breath of Fire. I think that's also a dead franchise. Breath of Fire 3 was number 10. Okay. And the, okay, second question was, okay, wait a minute, where am I? Okay, wait a minute, uh, world top 10 versus Japan top 10. I guess Okami is number one in Japan for favorite game. Interesting. Okay. Game series. The world was uh, Resident Evil. Japan was Monster Hunter for favorite Capcom series. And in both cases, in both worldwide and Japan, Mega Man was number two. Okay. In America, Okami was number ten. Dino Crisis was five. Ace Attorney was six. Street Fighter, Street Fighter seven. What? Around the world, the top ten, the top ten Capcom game series, Street Fighter is number seven. That is shocking. I would think Street Fighter would probably three, but no, it's Devil May Cry, then Monster Hunter, then Dino Crisis, then Ace Attorney, then Street Fighter. Breath of Fire versus Capcom and Okami. In Japan, Street Fighter is like number five. Okay. Uh, let's see. Favorite Capcom character. Okay. Number three is Mega Man X. And then number seven is Classic Mega Man. Five, number five is zero. And Amaterasu is ten. So, like, Okami's getting some love, but not as much. Uh, let me see. I, I know there's got to be some other stuff. Popular... Popular male characters. Dante, yes. Uh, huh. Lanny Kari in Mega Man X is the pop... Number... F Six most popular male characters that were voted in Japan. Interesting. 
And when you go into double soul, the 20, the plus 20 boost still happens. Oh, that's cool. Let's pop your female characters. I don't think any Mega Man characters are going to be here because Mega Man has, like, no female characters yet. Oh, no! Uh, Sonya Strum is in there. Uh, Japan voted for top 10 most popular female characters, and Sonya Strum is number 10. Ah, interesting. From Star Force. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything interesting. I think those are probably the main ones I wanted to look at. Okay, are there any Capcom game series, including spin-offs, that you would like to see get a sequel or a new game? And Mega Man's number two. Mega Man is number two. Dino Crisis was number one. Okami was number seven. Dark St Darkstalkers was five. Ace Attorney was eight. Breath of Fire is ten. Okay. Uh, is there a game that you would like to see completely remade with the latest technology, including character design and story direction? Is Mega Man id in here? Um, Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 got number 4. That's right, I remember this. Rival Schools got 5. Ace Attorney 1, 2, and 3 got 6. Oh, I forgot about Final Fight. Royal Crest, Tony Yoshi, Breath of Fire, okay. So yeah, Mega Man's number two. What is the first Capcom game you played? And I guess it's taking any game in any of the Capcom franchises, but Mega Man's number one. And then Mega Man X was four. Oh, okay, I see. It's Mega Man 1 was the first game that was voted for the first Capcom game people played. It was Mega Man 1, there's Mega Man X, Mega Man 2. Interesting. I know I'm taking a... I should have... I should be showing this off. I'm sorry. Which game influenced you the most? I see Mega Man X in there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Copy. Sorry. I should have been at least showing it on screen. But here. Here's a link to it. Luna fan. Yeah, there's a link to the freaking thing. I should have been showing it on screen. That's that's me being dumb. It's kind of interesting to look at. Now that I'm done distracting myself with Capcom surveys, I need to get back to this. But yeah, if you look through those surveys, you can see how popular Mega Man is act actually is as a franchise. Obviously not like their number ones most of the time, but it's still really popular. And that survey tells Capcom, hey, do more stuff with Mega Man. I am actually shocked that Street Fighter was very low in terms of like their fa oh, the favorite franchise. I thought it would be in the top five. I'm actually kind of shocked.
said that like all the popular games in the U.S. are shooters. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it ended up being. One more Ace Attorney, one more Megan, man. Yeah, pretty much. At least in Resident Evil's case, even though it is a shooter, it is a survival horror game. But typically when you say shooters, you typically mean stuff like Halo and Co Call of Duty, Halo. Like, those were the games back in early 2000s. Hell, Call of Duty still won't stop making games. But yeah, I'm actually shocked that Dino, Cross Dino Crisis was so high up. Soul Cross also has super armor and heals a bit after every battle. Oh, that's cool. Does the heal only happen if you're in the sun? Anger and hate are supreme. Riku wasted an elixir. I was mashing triangle! You know what? You think so? Oh, okay. Oh, whoops. I accidentally posted the link again. Oops. I gotta set up my uh, death counter again. You want to know what I think is actually happening? Why I wasn't dodging? Because Riku's triangle command popped up first. So I basically told Riku to attack. But that I had to activate first before I could dodge. So I might need to turn those abilities off. Actually, kind of speaking of Ace Attorney for a second, I know we are getting collections and, like, there was that collection that just came out where one of the games was, like, Japanese exclusive. When was the last time Ace Attorney had a brand new game? When, when was the last time? I actually don't know because I haven't played much Ace Attorney myself. on the 3DS. Right. Great Ace Attorney? Yeah, that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. So, 
Uh, do you remember what year that came out? They keep insisting a, a new Ace Attorney is coming out. Okay. But... They keep insisting, but... There's no results, Capcom. to look up Great Ace Attorney and see when that came out. Yeah, at, at least that's a plus right now. Every game has been released in the U.S. I Is all the... Actually, now that you bring that up, is every Ace Attorney game on Switch now? Other than the latent crossover? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two. As commanded when Sorok's combo is about to end. Right. Every single one. Hmm. That's nice. I think by doing this... Blocks enemies with shield of darkness as commanded. Stops enemy movements with dark magic spells as commanded when Sora's combo is about to end. I think these were causing me problems. Anger and hate are supreme. There we go. Okay, I can... I can elixir, or I can let Riku do it, I'm not sure. Might not be a bad thing to stream. I get that. I feel like with Ace Attorney, though, if you want to stream it, you... I just don't think it's a good... Uh... I just don't think Ace Attorney works as a stream game if you have played it before. You know, it's like that visual novel type of thing. Unless you, like, completely forget everything about it, you know? I think that's the only way Ace Attorney really works as a stream game. And basically any visual novel. Unless you're really trying to go for, like, a voice acting sort of thing. Like, you're really trying to show off, like, your voice acting talent sort of thing. That's, like, the only other th reason I can consider streaming an Ace Attorney thing if i already gone through it before. At least with Professor Layton, the puzzles is something where you I feel like you can easily forget. And even if you don't forget the puzzles in Professor Layton, you can, like, basically speed on it. Be, like, reacting. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and like most reactions, it doesn't necessarily work if uh, you know what's coming up. I've, 
Granted, the only Ace Attorney games I have personally played is the original trilogy that's on Switch. I own a copy of one on DS, but that's the only one I I own physically. But I do I did play through the collection on Switch, the first one. But yeah, theoretically I could go through the others, but I I'm not sure. I probably still need to unequip Riku's abilities. I'm good. I think I have to do that every time. Unless I leave the world go and go to a world that never was. Something's coming up. I'm going to have to leave, but I could probably play for at least another half an hour, 45 minutes. All right. Yep, I have to unequip these. I'm going to have to do that every time. Molly, stop. You're fine. Did not get hit. So that's a good sign. I don't think Riku has used an elixir. Of course, Riku didn't use one on me. Hmm. I see the problem with trying to rely on Riku using elixirs. Hey, stop, 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 Molly. No. Molly, come on, you're fine. Sorry, my dog wants it, clearly wants attention. You're fine. No, 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 come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So in Ace Attorney's case, other than the latent crossover, every game is now on Switch. So they can't just, you know, focus on like a new compilation. They have to make something new. <laughs> Maybe for the Switch 2. I mean, we can't we can't even say that for Mega Man. Mega Man at least has two more collections. At least. Star Force and Legends. And that is also not counting potential spin-off game collections that they can easily do. But at least Ace Attorney is at a point where it's like, okay, uh, we if we want more Ace Attorney stuff, we actually have to make more things. Uh, who made Professor Layton? That's not Capcom, is it? Professor Layton. Who made Layton? I actually have the three game, the three DS games. Oh, it was level five. Okay. I can see why that one would have trouble getting a new version. I was going to say, when was the last time we got a Professor Layton game? But I think not long ago we had that, uh... We had a Professor Layton game that had, like, the female protag. I forget. So, like, we had something Professor Layton related in the last few years. I just don't think we got, like, any sort of collections. And I'm not 100% sure if we would if we would get a Professor Layton collection. Not that people wouldn't buy it, but more of like I'm not sure how big of a developer Level Five actually is. To the point where if getting a collection made would take away resources to make a brand new game. Capcom probably has like a division that could just focus on these collections and still make new games. I don't know if level 5 is that large. World of Steam was announced? They announced a new one, okay. That's something. So they are working on a new Layton game. Okay. But yeah, I just don't know if Level 5 is a large enough company to be able to make collections and new games without, like... Without really just taking away from whatever a new game they could be making would be. I mean, I know Level 5 made, like, Dragon Quest, like, 8 and 9. But if there was going to be, like, new ports for those, that could just be just a Square Enix thing. That can outsource it to someone else. And I think they did that with 8, maybe. I can't... I can't remember. The first three games were on iOS. Well, that's just, uh, those are ports, right? More or less. They're not like full blown remakes or anything, right?
Although, I don't even know if Professor Layton needs remakes. Maybe just a collection, but still. cutscenes in the first one. Okay, so they do add a couple things. Maybe I should use this sparingly. give myself access to reflect, that might be more important. Oh, good. We're doing this. Oh, wait, I gotta be careful not to attack. Just had to add some things because not DS. Yeah, just make sure it's not on the bottom screen. Most of Professor Layton can probably just be on a single screen, you know? Like, it's not that difficult. Or not as complex to put Professor Layton on a single screen. But there are definitely games that were on DS that are probably hard to do. To actually bring them properly to another system. One that's basically impossible that comes to mind is The World Ends With You. They've tried. It's not the same. It's definitely not the same. Monsai, have you ever played The World Ends With You? Specifically the first one. Not to say that the second one's bad or anything, but I, I'm asking specifically for the first one. Because it was originally on DS and then there's a uh, iOS version and a Switch version. You have. Such a good game. It's too bad they, you know, can't properly bring it back. You, you tried replaying it recently? Couldn't beat the first boss, really. Uh, I should ask, are you playing the DS version, or are you playing the Switch or the iOS? I personally have never played the iOS or the Switch version. I have friends who've tried them. It's just... N no. From what I understand about the Switch version, if you're going to buy that version, you're playing that game exclusively portably. Get yourself a touch screen, uh, like a screen protector for your, for the screen, and get yourself a, like, like a phone stylus for it. Oh, you have played... You were playing the DS version. Okay. Yeah, that game cannot be properly put into another game, unless it was for the 3DS, which... <coughs> Glitch, look. I'm glad we got a sequel, because I didn't hate the sequel. But, why didn't we get a sequel on the 3DS? That was the perfect time to do it.
And you know, there's part of me that thought to actually stream World Ends with you. But if I were to stream World Ends with you, I'd probably go with the DS version. And if I'm going with the DS version, I need, like, I would need a modded 3DS for that. Because I don't know how effective I could play that game if I was going with, like, an emulator. Anger and hate are supreme. Yeah, I would probably need a modded 3DS to basically screen capture. Well, Riku wasted a elixir. He wasted two. You okay, Molly? Are you choking on a bone? I'm just gonna assume Riku's not gonna give me an elixir. I think you can use this when you try to use an item. Okay. Well, I tried blocking, but it didn't do shit. I thought he would get stunned, but no. He didn't. I almost need to dodge around. Until he uses the vine move. Oh yeah, even though I like the world ends with you, the DS version, I'm not the best at it. <laughs> like, I can play the bottom screen perfectly fine, but my brain can't multitask well with the top screen effectively like it's mostly mindless like i'll attack in the right direction for the top screen but i i have trouble getting like the special moves you know without slowing down I think giving Riku the elixirs aren't really going to help. I would have to be spamming limits, and even then it's not guaranteed. Which I got very far that one time where I did, so... Did you ever play the Neo World Ends with you? And if so, what did you actually think about that? You haven't played it? Okay. I like Neo World Ends with you. I didn't have that much of an issue with it. Gameplay had to be a little bit different, but, you know, I don't hate it. 
barely understand the plot of the first world ends with you. Ah, that's understandable. But hey, sometimes you don't need to play through for the plot. Just play for the gameplay. It's like the Kingdom Hearts argument. Yeah, the story is complicated, but don't play for the story. Play for the gameplay. The story will, you know... Yeah, the this, this story will come in, you know, as you play. <laughs> and if you don't care for the plot, fine. Play for the gameplay. But no, Neo Twilly, uh, the gameplay works a little bit differently. You can have up to six party members at a time. And each party member is tied to... Well, it's tied to a pin, but each pin is tied to one of six buttons. an elixir. Thanks, Riku. It's definitely safer to do this. I'm still probably better off if I can actually go with the reflect. I was expecting him to go with the... Be gone! But no. He went for Vine. At this point, this entire stream is just going to be Xemnas. Because I thought I was making progress, but I mean, I kind of did. Maybe I need to use limits until I get to the point where he starts shooting lasers. And he changes his attack pattern. Because maybe that'll be easier to dodge around and then attack him when uh, his attack ends. Not sure. Come on! Damn it. He tricked me. Perfect. 
Yeah, maybe I'll try. Sp I'll try. I'll try splitting. I can't speak. Sorry. I'll try spamming limits until he uses the lasers and see if I can dodge that a little bit better. I think it's one of those cases where you have to keep dodging until he does like the final set of lasers where he has like two, he has an extra clone of himself shooting lasers at you. Then once that ends, he has an opening. Phase two, unless I mess up. Didn't go with the vine. Yeah, at this point, I'll start spamming. I wasn't close enough to Riku. Okay, next phase. Th this move, yep. Oh, 
Okay. So, I had the right idea. The problem is... When I double jump to block that one move, he immediately goes straight to the next attack, and I can't do anything about it. So maybe when he does that circle, I either just... You know what? I probably just need a block. No reflect. I think I just need a block. What if I gave Riku Mega Elixirs? It would affect the entire party. So even if he uses it on himself, I still get the boost. But it's too bad I can't set his AI to really only focus on me. I believe in March 3. You are able to, like, fully customize, like, the AI, like, really well. Like, I could tell Donald, like, hey, if you're gonna cure, you're only allowed to cure me. If you're gonna, if, Goofy, if you're gonna use a potion, you're only gonna use it on me. I think you must really let you do that. Okay, pretty much off to phase two, more or less. First of all, I'm going to equip these two. Customize Riku. Let's see. Use this item often. Only in an emergency. Okay, here's the problem. What does it mean, only in an emergency? Yeah, I don't... It's not auto-reload re that I need. If it means, like... You know what? I don't know. I actually don't know what this would actually mean. 
target attack. Concentrates attacks on Sora's target. Flight fights close to Sora. So the party members will support. While Sora attacks, party members will support him. Okay. Um. Would that mean prioritizing elixirs? Relentless attack. Party members defeat their target before attacking another. That's not it. Helping this other stranger 100% bound over two. He's on his way to getting help style. He's near the end. Very cool. Very cool. It's all good. Fight with your individual target attack. So I'm in Riku's uh, customize menu. And when I'm looking at items, you can either have it with this, where it's use this item often. Or we can have it to where use this item only in an emergency. But the problem is, what does only an emergency actually mean in this case? Like, does someone need to be in the red? Does... But there's no way to be like, hey, only target... You know, maybe setting the AI for Dawn and Goofy a little bit better might actually help me with some of these other fights. Thank you. 
Dang it. That's on me. For now, I think if I remember correctly, Kingdom Hearts 1's like party customization was way more detailed than Kingdom Hearts 2's. If I remember correctly. Like you could tell Donald, hey, uh only use defensive stuff, only use offensive stuff. Actually, I haven't checked Donald's in here. And maybe there are some of them where it's like only focus on Sora. Stop gliding. Keep going. I got a few minutes before I need to cut it. Like another fight with Fink, uh, Form Two. It was right at the tip of his laser. Great. I was just in range. In that case, Xemnas was like a Marth player. dance yet. Okay. Oh, come on. I thought I needed him to get a little bit lower health before he would do the fast one, but no, he was just in range. Oh, come on. It's not exactly five bars or seven bars in, uh, of health. I don't know the exact placement of his health, but I knew he was close, but I just thought I needed another combo. Okay, 
that was on me. I just thought, hey, maybe if I attack when the shield ends, but no. I should have just waited. Play it safe. I would like at least one more fight. With form two. Now we are for sure on the fast dance. Come on. I... Mm, okay, whatever. I think I only have enough time for maybe one more fight. I would like it to be a... Phase 2 fight. But if I lose this, I'm kind of pushing it. If that was the faster one, I probably would be dead. Okay. For sure, he could do the faster one now. Okay. 
Make sure I'm fully healed just in case. Should do it. No, nope, I'm not taking that risk. I figured I was too far away. Now we're good. At least I'm. Well, I shouldn't say that just yet. I could mess up. I made it to phase two. Alright. Let's give it a go. I'll take it. Ah, oh, dang it. I didn't get the elixir off in time. I messed up. I was fumbling through my menu. I got him into a pattern. I don't know what type of pattern, but I got him into a pattern there. But I have to call it. Thanks for everyone who showed up. I'm doing these streams Monday through Friday at noon Pacific time. If you want to see the old streams that are not on Twitch anymore, they're on YouTube at Scott on 64 Stream Archives. There's a link in the about page. Yeah, I have to call it a little bit early. I got some stuff to do. Tomorrow, you know what? I think... To break things up, we're going to work on synthesis uh, synthesis grinding tomorrow, just to break things up. I should really look into the whole customizing AI thing, because that might make a difference for all I know. Anyway, have a good day. Later.